Hello all. My name is Stephen Ogutoye, a medical doctor by profession, a family medicine by specialty, and a medical missionary by calling. I'm working presently in Equa Hospital, a mission hospital located in Egbekogi State, Nigeria. Today I will be talking on a topic that's very relevant to our health. And we know according to WHO, health is a state of complete physical, mental, and social well-being and not just the absence of disease. So anything that touches our physical, mental, and social aspect of life, and let me add spiritual aspect of life, is important to our health. As spirituality in medicine is something also that have been proven to be very important to our health. Now, today I will be talking on the impact of social media on Christian youth faith and lifestyle. The impact of social media on Christian youth faith and lifestyle. According to Dim Kafili, nothing has so touched entirely the soul of human existence after God, it is the social network or social media. Social media has crossed boundaries. It has crossed geographical boundaries, whether it be Africa or America or Europe. Social media is everywhere. It has caused economic boundaries. Both the rich and the poor engage in the use of social media. Racial boundary, age is no longer a barrier, but the young and the old use social media. For example, Facebook has up to 2.6 billion users presently. And uh, up to 62% of online users age 65 and above use Facebook. Up to 72% of those who are online that are age 50 to 64 uses Facebook. And also the youth, in fact, 88% of youths, 18 to 29 years old about that are online, uses Facebook. WhatsApp has up to 1.5 billion users presently. So this is something that have bridged gaps and linked nations together. So it's so important to talk about it. What is social media? Social media are interactive computer-mediated technologies that facilitate the creation or sharing of information, ideas, career interests, and other forms of expression via the virtual communities and networks. So user-generated content are, you know, are, 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 are being shared online through social media. Content like text, photos, videos, audio, data are being shared online using social media. And uh, we have examples of social media platforms, so many of them, numerous. I've mentioned Facebook, WhatsApp, we have lots of them, YouTube, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, Pin Interest, Vimeo, lots of them. And audio platform like MixLR, a lot of them, through which uh, user-generated content can be shared online. Uh, to various people who can access it. So social media has a lot of impacts, both positive and negative. But let me start by talking about the positive impacts of social media. One is unlimited useful information. It's just unlimited. So much information available through social media. Is information that has positive impact on your health. For example, during the COVID season that we are still in, lots of information that are useful for people to educate them, to get them to know what to do, what to avoid, are being shared through social media. And then millions of people can access this information. Information that are going to be of help to families are being shared on social media solutions to a lot of things you can get online you can get on youtube you know and get videos on how to do various things things that has to do with day-to-day -day activities things that have to do with technology even cooking you can get lots of things lots of information from social media what of educations a lot of information that help you, you, you your education as a doctor, I can access lots of materials online, you know, to refresh my memory. 
as someone that does surgery i can get youtube videos that reminds me of procedures you know just before you get to enter the theater lots of things you can do and you can assess through social media so social media has a lot of positive impact still talking about the positive impacts of social media we have mind-blowing access to christian materials that can help you grow in maturity the way we talk about ebooks lots of opportunity to get that through social media ebooks are available even for sharing there was this day somebody just shared some ebook through whatsapp about 10 of them and i was looking at some of those books i said these are books that it takes us a lot those days to, to, to save money, to buy them, to get their you know, hard copy. And then we we'll read and digest and save more money to get more. Now it's available. You know, the e-books that are even available for free. PDF formats. And, you know, unfortunately, we read less now that they are more available than those days that you are to get them all by hard copy. Do we talk about, you know, audio and video messages of, you know, reputable ministers of the gospel, you know, those that teach us different aspects of life, leadership, wisdom, all manner of things that are available for you through social media. Edifying films, films that can be a blessing to you and, you know, to several other youths are available. A lot of them you can even download on YouTube free of charge. Well, with your data there. But these things are available. Things that you will find difficult to get, you can now get them on social media. And it's a blessing. What of positive social change? A lot of change has come upon different communities and nations through social media. You know, what of those moves that started on social media that even leads to the change of repressive governments? Things that could have been swept under the ground before, you know, being molested by enforcement agents that some have captured and it becomes something that is available, you know, in a viral form and a lot of reform and changes has come. That could not have happened without social media. It gives people the voice. To, to project things that can make changes in the, in the government or in the nation. What of making and maintaining life-changing contacts? A lot of people that having a contact with them now has brought a positive change to you, a lot of positive impact on your business, on your life, but you get those contacts by social media. Some you have lost contact with and then you reconnect through social media. You can connect to people that mentor you through social media. These are positive impacts. Another one is access to enriching programs and training. Look at what happened during the COVID season. Lots of training, lots of opportunity to engage in training without traveling anywhere. Through social media, you can get settled and then get access to teaching rooms. That were, you know, you look at the teaching room that some people organized during this moment. We are even through WhatsApp alone, you can sit down and get materials and get trained and respond through voice notes and through other means, pictures and, and, and you know, text, books, PDF. This is a wonderful opportunity through social media. Fellowshipping on the go. You don't have to sit down together really to, be, to continue your fellowship. You can still continue your fellowship while you are not together wonderful opportunity the one that excites me the most is the unequal opportunity for evangelism missions and discipleship what christ asks us to do can be done and can be advanced through social media lots of nations that you can never assess that you can assess now through social media a lot of people that have come to know the lord that are growing in the lord through social media, you can disciple through social media. You can teach the gospel, you can teach the word of God through social media. You can reach out to people that you will never have been able to assess by any other means than through social media.
nations, reaching the world, go and treat the nations, has become more possible by access to social media. So these are opportunities that we need to look into. Positive impacts upon our community, our state, our nation, and the entire world. So we need to know this so that we will know how to maximize this opportunity. These are positive things that social media has brought to our world. Now, let's dwell a little more on the negative impacts of social media. Now, I want you to listen very well, especially Christian youths that are listening to me. There are negative impacts of social media, and you need to know them. Because when you know them, you will be able uh, to overcome them. You'll be able to recognize them. You'll be able to overcome them so that you can focus and maximize the positive thing in social media. Now, I will talk about some of them. The first one I will talk about is engrossment. Engrossment. You see, a lot of youth, not just youth alone, a lot of people that use social media have become so engrossed that it's becoming something negative to their life. You see people holding phone, sleeping, they sleep holding phone, they wake up early with the phone, they sleep with the phone and wake up with the phone on social media. You see people using social media and chatting while in the church. You see them sitting down. And then they are with their phone. You think they are on the Bible, but they are chatting, sending messages, receiving messages while in the church. These are things that, 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 that work against your growth as a believer, if you are one. You see people chatting while on the road, every head bent chatting while on the road. And some will chat while driving. I've even seen people on motorcycle using one end, you know, to, to ride and the other hand on the phone trying to reply to reply messages or chatting while they are on the motorcycle. A lot of accident has happened through this. A lot. Ask the Federal Safety Commission, they will tell you of lots of accidents that as a result of someone on the phone while driving. So engrossment, that is, that is becoming too much. When you are engrossed to the extent that you are not even aware of your environment or the negative impact of this thing to your health. Take note of that. Also, we have influence of ungodly lifestyle. You see, social media and some of these online things are how to recondition our minds to what is unbiblical and to desensitize us to what is evil. You know, in our world presently, what things are pressing us to do is making the good to look bad and to make the bad to look not so bad or even outrightly good. That is the problem. You see, flamboyant lifestyle over time is something that social media can project to youth if you are not careful it tells you you know that there is nothing wrong with a life of living a life of flamboyance or extravagant life people flaunt materials possession you see people just building their house they flaunt their house and say this is the mansion i just built you don't know the source of the world. You see celebrities, they stand before cars and they flaunt the new cars. So you see youth doing everything to get that. They buy a new cloth that worth hundreds of thousands of millions of naira or you know, dollars. They wear it, they put it on Instagram. You keep seeing flaunting of wealth. There was this day I even saw someone on, 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 on Facebook you know, a renowned a daughter of a renowned leader sitting down with bags, different bags and shoes. Initially, I thought it was a supermarket, only for me to discover it was a room. And that was placed on, on Facebook, just for people to see wealth and say, wow, I need to be like this. No wonder youths are doing anything, even killing, to be like that. These are things that social media do. You see this, you know, systemic desensitization, you know, to, to exposing your nakedness for no reason. 
Yes, modesty is something that we value, especially here in Africa. And it is biblical to be modest, to be temperate, is, is, is to, to, be, to do things in moderation is biblical. But today what we have, sensual, sensual mode of dressing being projected on social media, you see the youth trying to be like that, to copy that. They want to be like those people they are seeing on social media. I thought you see them too trying to do the same thing, you know, going naked, put their nude materials, and they project it on social media. A lot of things that social media projects, ungodly lifestyle that is being systematically projected for the youth to copy. May the Lord help us. In our present day, premarital sex is no longer anything, it's just normal. Sex out of marriage, sex out of wedlock is just normal. It's nothing serious. And these are things that we continue to see being projected as the normal. You see, I do words. People, people type anything, they chat anything without even thinking. When we know, especially we know as believers, that every I do words, you must account for them. Why say things that you don't mean why say things that has no meaning why say things that will injure the person that is reading it on the other side i see abusive words so 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 prevalent on social media you are reading news and then you see the comment section of news you see people abusing themselves using coarse words on themselves you see those from the north abusing those from the south, those from the east abusing those from the west. And you see Christians also involved in doing this because of the pressure of social media wanting to do something and to belong. I've even read curses that were ended with in Jesus' name. Cursing the other person and putting Jesus' name there. I see these things on social media. You see people having no respect for elders. Even if that elder is a, is a politician that is misbehaving. You know, normal moral sense should teach you that there are certain things you don't say to elders. There should be courtesy. But social media, because nobody can see your face. You just put an avatar, nobody knows who you really are. And then you, 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 you talk to elders with that respect. These are things that social media are impacting the youth negatively to do. You know, lots of things. Spread of lies. Things that you have not really established to be true. And then you keep going about sharing it. Yes. Social media gives us opportunity to express ourselves. That is why, you know, people do what they do. But still, you don't need to keep sharing and spreading rumors that are not found to be true. A lot of outright lies have, been, have become viral. And you discover that, oh... This thing is a lie. Somebody can sit down and put together what is not real and they will project it and then without reading, without really meditating and saying, is this thing true and trying to find out, you continue to share. You see? Gay movement is normal now. It's, a, it's something being projected on social media. Cross-dressing. You see a lot of people. Oh, somebody say I am a cross-dresser and you have a lot of other people who are mentees who are coming up in different parts of Nigeria. You know, for example, say also I'm a cross-dresser because they are fundamental. Social media make all these things normal. Self-glory. Trying to all the time attract attention to yourself. Me, 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 me all the time. Oh, see my look, my look is the best. My marriage is great. You want everybody to know that, oh, I have the best marriage in the world. Come and see me and my wife. Come and see me and my children. Some even put an update of what happened in their house on social media every day. These are excesses. Some will even tag themselves and as they travel all over the nation, they are telling you where they are each time. Just attract your attention to yourself. I've seen pictures of ministers that just bought, you know, maybe a jet, you post before it, because you want everybody to know, to see, you know, how rich you are now. We are being desensitized also to heaven's reality. Something is telling us that this is where we have come to stay. This is our, this is our home. We are not going to die. We are going nowhere. 
prophecies are there that are really staring us at in our face to tell us that we're in the end time. But yet, because of desensitization, is nothing to us. We think everything is just here. Nothing like the will of God for so many youths when it comes to relationship any longer. Because why do they need the will of God when there are a lot of dating sites to go and a lot of people to connect to in social media? And what have been the result of this? Yes, we can have an example of this one, it work and that. But what are several things we've seen? You see, people, you know, who don't even know themselves. You don't know the other person at the other hand. These are some of the things that happen influencing the youth towards living an ungodly life. And these are things that they get impacted on through social media. Social media has made temptation to become easy. I call it temptation made easy. No wonder the Bible says that in the last day, it shall be becoming increasingly difficult to be a Christian. You know, those days... Before you can have access to some of these x uh, contents and pornographic material, you know, it's not that easy. You know, I remember stories I've read, you know, about the Roman theater where they gather, okay, you want to watch, you want to see, you know, pornographic material. They can make slaves to sleep with themselves, you know, and play with themselves while everybody's watching and laughing and then doing whatever they want to do. You want to watch horror film, okay. Right, they can put slaves or some of these captured Christians who have been persecuted and put them there and open, you know, the gate for a lion to come out and then uh, or a bull and then they, they, they fight and kill them right while everybody's watching and seeing the blood being spilled on the floor. You see, but the time comes that was repackaged, and then you have to go to a movie house to watch a blue film or to see things like that. You have to pay and get to a movie house. Later it becomes repackaged that you don't have to go to a movie house. It's right there in your room on your TV set, you know, with your CD you can watch. Then later you find what? No, that has to be repackaged again so that we can have access to more. And then we have, you have a, a single, you know, disc that can have season film. You can sit down and watch for days without going anywhere. And then that was not enough. Now, what do we have? Everything has been repackaged to your phone. You, you carry it all around. I can be on it and nobody knows what I'm reading or what, I, what I'm engaged doing. Whether it's impacting me positively or negatively. You have access to those things. You have access to unlimited materials through social media like YouTube, like Vimeo and the rest. It's becoming easier. Remember those times of you know, sexting on using LMS. You know, people sending, you know, sexual materials to themselves using MMS. We have cyber sex. And we have easy access to courtism. I, I discovered that you can actually join courts online. It's, it's not possible. There was this day that, you know, one of my cousins was has so much become engrossed and almost, you know, being damaged by a court group. He was getting to know online. He didn't know. He started so very, you know, innocently and then he was getting engrossed and he was in trouble. Before we discover and it takes a lot, you know, to disengage this boy. And, you know, he was so grateful for it that he's restored. In our days, gambling has been repackaged. Those days, if you want to gamble, you need, you need to make a lot of effort. I remember those, you go to those houses, you know, those houses and then those booths and those lotto houses and boats and do a lot of, you know, uh, you have to be going there. Somebody can even say, ah, bros, where are you going? You are, you are, are you supposed to be there? You know, and then they gamble and gamble and predict and those things, they lose a lot of money. You know, and some of that, the time they lose their family. But these days, you don't need that. It's been repackaged. You know, you have Bet Niger, Lotto Niger, and we have lots and lots of them. It's been repackaged. You see, it's become easier. And this is something that is impacting the youth, especially Christian youth, negatively. What of erroneous teachings? We have people who are, who are wolf in sheep clothing, who has access on on driver houses to several people to share their material with a lot of false teachers who are teaching what is not you know scriptural 
who have access to a lot of you to follow them. Lot of false teachings. Lot of false teachings that you found projected into social media and you see people, you know, sharing and sharing and you check and say, this is damaging, this is not correct. These are impacts of social media on the life of youth. Do you know you don't have to bow before a carved image, you know, to say you are engaged in idolatry? You know, anything that stands between you and God is an idol. Anything that you give more attention to, anything that takes much from your heart, from your soul, devotion, it's an idol. So there is this thing I call e-idolatry. When your gadgets become something that takes everything from you, your God or your gadget, which is the first and last thing in a day. Some, they wake up with their gadget, they sleep with their gadget. It's always the first and the last thing they do in each day. So you can ask yourself, do I spend hours on social media as a Christian youth? And just minutes, I struggle to spend minutes with my Bible per day. Fellowship with believers are because boring. I'm looking at my time. I want to leave. I don't want to stay there. Whereas engagement with, you know, friends and unbelievers are fun on social media. I can spend nights with my phone, but I can really spend few moments in prayer. I have propensity to quickly share any content, whether it's whether it's positive, you know, or negative, anything. I can easily share without even thinking twice. Yet, I can share the only thing that has been commanded for me to share, which is the good news with my friends. If I have all this, it tells me that this thing is becoming an idol that I regard more than God. Dangerous contacts and friendships. Dangerous ones. You can see, you know, well, because you don't know who's at the other side. A lot of people have contacted friends in cults that are actually enemies. A lot of people have been swindled. Their businesses are run down because of friends they met online through social media. Some will fall in love in cults and fall into trouble because the other person at the other side is a deceiver. He wants to destroy you. You know, we have had news of people you know, that met online, and then you know this news that went viral some, some years ago of this young lady that went to meet another guy in the in the name of love in an hotel, and there she was killed and maimed and destroyed. These are things that social media have done. You've seen the story of the one that happened, someone that traveled from outside the country down to the east in Nigeria for someone he thinks he wants to marry her and down engage her in the house and imprison her in the house and swindle her of all her money until neighbors talk to the police about it. These are things that social media have done to you. They make contacts that destroy them. They make contacts, you know, that are actually held to exploit them in the name of friendship. Some have entered into legal problem, trouble, through social media. Always remember, nothing you post online is really ever personal or can, can be deleted or erased. You can delete things and it can still be retrieved. You know that even on your own system, there are things, what you delete on your system is not gone forever. There are recovery through tools to get things you have deleted that you have even removed from the recycle bin. So when you just post anything you like online, be careful. These are, these are things that have impacted you negatively. We heard of social, you know, people who are arrested because of the inciting materials they put online. Remember the story of one that was, you know, recently a, a, a arrested, you know, in Dubai or something, that the FBI used Instagram and Snapchat to track him down, what he has been posting over time. 
Remember the other guy, you know, I think from Lagos, that was arrested recently for, you know, kissing a minor, you know, and p- putting it on YouTube or things like that. And say, oh, I don't really mean it. You know, it's this. I don't have any wrong intention. And he, he entered into trouble. Be careful what you do with social media. Be careful what you put online. Youths. These are things that are important for us to note. As much as social media has lots of positive impact, these are areas that can impact us negatively. And you need to know about them. Social media can tilt someone who is at risk of low self-esteem into heat. And you see some even entering depression. And also, it can show the symptoms of someone who has low self-esteem. You see, people, some people are so crazy with cravings for likes. They can do anything to get liked. Anything. And the more they likes, not because they are doing any business, but because you so, they just want to be, get, to be liked by doing anything. People have posted anything just to be liked. It may be a sign of having a low self-esteem. Longings to train by enemy, desire to go viral by enemy, enemies. You see young girls, you know, putting their nude picture online just because they want to go viral. It may be a sign of a problem of low self-esteem. Not knowing that you are who you are, you are who God has made it to be by the grace of God. And being secured in that. People can train by enemies. Remember the, the story in social media of someone that went to a supermarket and then got, you know, picked one of the materials from the rack, you know, and started, you know, maybe sipping it or something. And it was charged to court by the owner, the company that owns that, that brand because it's, it's, it's an indictment for them, for people to begin to say, oh, I can't get that material because I don't know, maybe somebody have pick it from the supermarket and open it and things like that. And when he was asked why he was doing this, he said, well, because he, he did it and, you know, I and, and put it online. And he said, well, I just want to go viral. But he ended up having trouble with the enforcement agents. Problems of relationship. You see, social media, as much as it can help relationship, it can also injure relationship when it becomes excessive, when you don't have, you know, you don't watch how. You see people, you see, we see husband and wife that are separated, really not together because both are on gadgets and they don't have time to really talk together. You have families that parents don't really have time for their children. The parents, each person are on their gadgets with the little time they have when they come from work and the children are on their gadgets. Nobody is sitting down to talk together. Nobody really know who is who. Nobody really know what that child is going through. Maybe it's even on the social media chatting about the, 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 you know, the suicidal thoughts she's having. You don't know because you are also on your home and the mom is on her home. You know, there is this joke, you know, that I saw online of two people sitting together. Maybe they are out, you know, maybe they are uh, friends who are preparing to get married and they're getting to know each other. And the, other, the guy was sitting down there on the table with the, with, with the cup, with a phone. And the lady was saying, do you mind if I strap your phone to my forehead so I can pretend you are looking at me when I talk? You see, you talk with people, but yet you don't look at their face because you are greeting and exchanging pleasantries. You are actually on your phone, engrossed. It can injure relationship. So we need to know the limits and watch out when we are going beyond the limits. What of addiction? There is something you know they call internet addiction disorder. It has not yet entered the SM classification, you know, of mental health issues, but it's already an imagined thing that may enter soon. It's also known as problematic internet use or pathologic internet use. Problematic compulsive use of the internet that results in significant impairment in an individual's function in various life domains over a prolonged period of time. It's a problem that can have physical symptoms like a weakened immune system due to lack of sleep, loss of exercise, and increased risk for a condition we call Carpatone syndrome. People that are constantly, you know, 
type in and then on the on the on the system we can have eye strain we can have back strain and we can have symptoms of withdrawal just like someone who is on hardcore can have withdrawal symptom you can, somebody who is addicted to the internet can have withdrawal symptoms which can include agitation, depression, anger, and anxiety when the person is away from the technology. Maybe you are in a town and there is no network. You, you begin to sweat. You begin to feel very abnormal because for you now there is a problem. Psychological symptoms, you know, that can also turn to physical symptoms like rapid heartbeat, tense shoulders, shortness of breath. Things, you know, that can happen for someone that withdraw from other problems can also happen with this. So these are things that we need to know. I've talked about some health problems, like the one I just mentioned now, the, inter the internet addiction disorder. But you can have other problems like the eye strain, digital eye strain of you know staring so much on, on the screen for a long time, and it's just continuous. You have some people have constant headaches, disturbing ones. There is this thing that's called text neck, you know, neck problems that results from constantly bending your neck and then you are always bending your neck, you are on the, on the phone, you are walking, your neck is bent, you are everywhere, your neck is bent. We have talked about chronic pain that can come from strain and lots of problems on the, on the cervical uh, bones. These are things that happen. Earring defect car accidents that are taking place due to engrossment, sleep disturbances, anxiety, even depression. Depression have been traced to some of these things. Now, having said all this, the next question I will want to ask is what your response should be. What is your response? What should be my response as a Christian youth to these things? Because that is the crux of the matter. When you know that, okay, these negative impacts are there and you could actually be going through some of them right now, you are impacted negatively by your exposure to social media. So what do we do as Christian youth? Do we throw away social media and say, oh, I don't have to be part of this? If you want to do that, then you don't want to be in this world again because it's a reality. A time comes, you will be able to do nothing except you are connected online. That is the time we are going in. So you can't say, I don't want to be on social media. What of the positive impacts of this? So we just need understanding. I would say, maximize the opportunities that the social media offers, but don't be carried away by it. I will read from the scripture because that is where we Christians find our our base that is what teaches us basic things of life there is nothing you experience here on heart that the bible has not said something about and we are not ashamed to talk about the bible because that's a, a major reference point first corinthians chapter 7 verse 31 says those infrequent contact with the exciting things the world offers should make good use of their, of their opportunities without stopping to enjoy them for the world in its present form will soon be gone. So we should, we should make use of them. But we know that it's something that is passing. It's not forever. The entire world itself in its present form, the system of the world in its present form, we pass away. 2 Corinthians 4.4 4 gave us an understanding that is someone called the God of this world. And he said he has blinded the minds of them which believe not. Lest the light of the glorious gospel of Christ, who is the image of God, should shine unto them. So you see, so there is someone that is called the God of this world. He's not a joker. He's a master planner. He's been here for a while thousands of years he understand man he has an intention and one of the intentions is that the light of the gospel of Christ will not shine on people he doesn't want anyone to know God to serve God so you have intentional projection intentional you know manipulations to condition the mind of people away from God so we have that he does not want anyone to know Christ you know 
And 2 Corinthians 2 11 said, To keep Satan from getting the advantage of us, for we are not ignorant of his wives and intentions. So he has wives and intentions. He doesn't do things without a reason. Anything invented, anything put some, there is a purpose, there is an end. It may look so nice, so great on the outside, but there is a purpose. And we should not be ignorant as clear. So we can use whatever is on ground and use it positively, but we will not be entrapped. He says so that Satan will not outsmart, outsmart us. For we are familiar with his evil schemes. So he has schemes. But he cannot, when you are smarter than him by the wisdom of God, you can make use of you can. You can make use of this thing because the Bible says in Psalm 24 verse 1, the art is the loss of everything in it. So nothing really belongs to the devil. He can, he can, he can manipulate things and bring all these things up. But they are put there by God. There is nothing that comes from nothing. Everything you see comes from what God has made. Whether it be 5G or 9G, anything... There is nothing that can be invented from nothing. God has made us, so the earth belongs to God and the fullness. But there is a God of this age that is ruling the world system. And we should not be ignorant of that. One of his worldly weapons could be some of these things, and we know. And he's trying to use it to destroy, you know, human reasoning, building strongholds against the knowledge of God. But we know that. And then those proud obstacles that keeps people from knowing God, we destroy by the knowledge of God. Secondly, be sincere. One of the things that is good for anyone that wants to make an headway is sincerity. Don't deceive yourself. Be sincere with yourself. Be sincere with God. If you find that a social media is competing with the place of God in your heart, then don't just don't just gloss over it and say nothing. It's not these things are nothing. What is it talking about? Admit it. Repent and ask for help if you need one. He said, if anyone loves the world, the love for the Father is not in him. What are those things in the world? What are those things? You see them craving for sensual gratification. We talk about that. You just, you know, sensuality everywhere. Greedy longings of the mind. Anything my eyes see, I must get. Anything I see online, I must get it by all means. Even if it means cheating other people or going fetish. And thinking that this world is where we have come to stay. Assurance in one's own resources or in the stability of earthly things. As if it's stable. It's not stable. There is nothing we have here that is stable. A lot of things that we have years ago is outdated now. Something else is here. And what is here today will become outdated tomorrow. If you have a phone today and you are rejoicing, another brand is coming tomorrow and you will eat your phone. Nothing is stable. This world is passing away. You should know, and you should decide that I'm not going to bow. Just like the devil, the God of this age, tempted Jesus and said, If you will kneel down and worship me, I will give you everything. I will give you all these things you are saying, all these very wonderful, shiny things. And Christ said, No, get out of here. You must worship the Lord your God and serve only him. So you should say that and say, I'm going to serve the Lord. Yes, I will use these things, but I will use them to the glory of God. I will not be intimidated. The devil was not intimidated to even to, to even ask Jesus to kneel down. So why will he be intimidated to ask me or you to do that? But we will say no. We will not. We will not. We worship God alone, and that is why nothing must control you. He said, all things are lawful unto me, but all things are not expedient. All things are lawful for me, but I will not be brought under the power of any. Eh? Another one said, I must not become a slave to anything. Remember, self-control is one of the fruit of the Spirit. So, take charge. Engage self-control. Eh? The Word of God said in 4 Corinthians 7, 31, I read earlier. He said, those who use the things of the world should not become attached to them. Don't be attached. He said, they, they should use it eh, as though they were not absorbed by it. Don't be absorbed. 
He said you should deal as sparingly as possible with a purpose. Every time you do things, just do them on purpose. He says, as if not engrossed in them. We've talked about engrossment. Don't be engrossed. Don't be fully occupied with them. Use them well with a purpose. And if you want to engage self-control, well, if you don't know the Lord, it might be difficult. It's just like somebody struggling to get out of some addiction. It's difficult. You make decisions, you fall back to it, you need lots of help. Some well can struggle and struggle and get out of some. But you can't be completely free from things that hold you down because we are humans. We need the help of God. And that's why that's what we enjoy. Those of us, by God's grace, who have come to know His grace. He gives us the power to become. He gives us the power to do things we cannot do by ourselves. Things that you struggle to overcome, the power comes from within. So if you know the Lord, the power is there. If you don't, you have to know Him. It helps you a lot. Ask for the help of the Spirit of God. Pray. But be, be realistic too. Engage the help of others. Set a limit for yourself and say, well, this and no more. I don't want to go beyond this. I don't want to go beyond these hours. I don't want to. Sometimes you have to be intentional and say, well, now, for now, I drop my phone. I want to talk with my wife. I want to talk with my child or with, with, with my children. Engage accountability partners. You can talk to people. It can be your wife. There was this day, you know, this time I traveled away from home and I was on my phone and before I know what was happening, I got engrossed, you know, just looking at some pictures. And then from there, I felt, oh, you know, you are just looking and say, well, what, why is this person wearing this and things like that. You are looking and looking. And then as a man, you keep engrossed, you're, you know, so attached, you keep checking. And before you know what is happening, you are spending hours on materials that are not good for your soul. And I told myself, when I get home, I'm going to tell my wife about this. Because I know if I tell her next time when I want to get engaged again in things like that, that I will be feel guilty about, I will remember that I will tell her again. So I don't want to do that. You engage accountability partner. You can tell someone and say, no, when this happens, I will tell you about it. A lot of people are under bondage of pornography, but they don't engage anybody to help them. They keep pretending. And some of them are even ministers of, of, of the gospel. So to say, preaching to others, but yet they are struggling with addiction. To pornography material on social media. Then train your control level. Sometimes you may need to declare some social media only that say, well, if I'm not online for this number of time or days or hours, I will not die. And I'm going to do it to tell myself that I am in control. You phone or you media, you are not the one controlling me. I use you. You don't use me. So be intentional about what you post online. Philippians 4 8 says, fix your thought on what is true and honorable, and right, and pure, and lovely, and admirable. Think about things that are excellent and worthy of praise. So you ask yourself, is this true? What I'm about to post, is it true? Is it honorable? Is it right? Is it pure? Is it lovely? Is it something admirable? Is it excellent? Is it worthy of praise? So before you like, before you retweet, before you share, before you send, Ask some questions. Don't be an online freak. Don't be a copycat. Just copy, paste, and send or an e-maniac. Ask yourself as a Christian youth, as a Christian generally, ask yourself, is that how I would like to be represented? Because whatever you send as a content is now representing you. You cannot defend yourself. That thing is saying who you are. Ask yourself, what would Jesus think of this? Will this bring glory to God? Will I love my children to see or read this in years to come? Can I freely post this thing on my church group page? Am I free to do that? If you can't do some of these things, then there's a problem in that content. And ask yourself, who will this benefit? Of what benefit is this material or this content, this video, this audio that I'm about to send? We were taught in those days of WWJD because we, we know that there are some contemporary issues that may be difficult for you to open the scripture and say, oh yes, thou shalt not do this. Not really. Because you might not be able. And we were taught that when you don't know what to do on issues, ask yourself 
from the Jesus I know in the scriptures and that I know in my heart, what will he do? So they said, WWJD, and they made some material for us that we can look at each other and say, what will Jesus do? So too, you can do WWJP. What will Jesus post? These are the things that can guide and help you. If you're already addicted, then break free. Seek spiritual and medical help. Yes, sometimes you need some medical help to some addiction. But if you are not addicted, but you are already on the road there, yeah, then make a U-turn. Make a U-turn. Remember, the end of all things are here already. The devil is prepared. His materials are on ground. The systems are on ground. Are you prepared? Here we are here to serve the Lord with everything you have. Your profession uses to serve the Lord. I'm a doctor, I will use it to serve God, to make a blessing to my nation, to make a blessing to humanity, to use the skill that God has given me to project, you know, the beauty of God, to make people know that God is good. Whatever you have, used it to serve the Lord. And you have access to the computer or to your system, to social media, use it for the glory of God. It doesn't really mean preaching on people or, you know, or bombarding people always with, you know, with things that they may not even find interesting. Be interesting in yourself. Be someone that really truly care about people. Care about people on the other side. The same way you care about the feeling of people when you are with them physically. Care about their feelings online. Do things to the glory. But remember that all these things must have an hand. They are not a hand in themselves. They are just a means to an hand. We don't have a permanent resident here, friend. In conclusion, today, I leave you with this scripture. 1 Thessalonians chapter 5, verse 23. And the very God of peace sanctify you wholly. And I pray, God, your whole spirit and soul and body, that's a complete earth now, spirit, soul, and body, be preserved blameless unto the coming of our Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you.